We've also had a day back in July and in June of 100 degree temperature. So the heat main focus for us with the active tropics uh, again, very busy, but nothing at this time threatening southeast Louisiana. We have quite a bit of development out in the main uh, development region of the Atlantic Basin, also in the Caribbean and in the Gulf. And we'll take a closer look at our Gulf system as Tropical Depression 9. Earlier this morning, this was uh, classified as a potential tropical cyclone. That naming came about a few years ago, so warnings and watches could be issued. It means a system is expected to become a named storm, but it's so close to land that class classification of a PTC allows for warnings to be issued. No longer that it is now a depression with winds of 35 miles an hour, and it really is not taking advantage of the incredibly warm waters of the Gulf it is expected to strengthen a bit before moving inland. Wind of opportunity for strengthening is pretty limited because by midday tomorrow, less than 24 hours from now, it will already be on land. So what is going on? We've already said that the water temperatures in the Atlantic of course, or the Gulf of Mexico, of course, in August are very, very warm, but when you look at water vapor, notice the moisture is kind of all over the place. There does look to be a little bit of wind shear. Now it appears to be fairly light over the center of nine. However, away from the center, you do have some wind shear, which is kind of helping to disassociate some of those thunderstorms from the center. But what I think is more key is that we actually have some of that dry Saharan dust over the storm center, and that looks to plague the system basically through its duration in the Western Gulf. So it is so much more than just water temperatures. There's so much more factors that go into systems organizing or strengthening and looks like it will not be taking advantage of the very warm Gulf waters. Good news for South Texas and they need the rainfall. We need